good coffee. I thought it only fair both to you and to me that I don't talk before having some coffee. I guess it's so so apparent that even uh, Brain Man had said something about making sure he brought extra with him. And uh, we were talking about not using the water source at one of the shelters. So he was like, man, I was considering going and getting some water so that you had some some water for coffee but <laughs> anyway good morning thanks for joining us today i'm mark this is the ever backpacking and this is part two of our washita trail uh, we're doing a 65 mile section over four days uh, with the side trips it'll be over over 70 miles that we end up doing but it is uh it's been a gorgeous gorgeous week so far uh Weather has been just about perfect. First couple of days were a little bit cooler with really high winds. Yesterday was yesterday was about 80 degrees, and so it was warm. Uh, a lot of sweating, a lot of sweating going on, so I drank a lot yesterday, and I'm going to probably do the same today. It should be about the same. Um, it's, a, it's a crisp, cool morning, probably high 40s, low 50s. Um, I think that's what the forecast was for anyway. And where we are, it's probably a little bit cooler than what the forecast was being down in this little valley here. Uh, but it's nice. And I just see the sun starting to hit the tops of the trees at the top of the ridge over there. So we probably got uh, 45 minutes before the sun's up here. But I'm not in any rush this morning. So I thought I'd do a little breakfast from the hammock. Did up some coffee. We've got Flatbill Peak or, or Summit or Outlook later today, which uh, I'm looking forward to doing. For breakfast this morning, I'm doing a Meal to Go Bar, one of these Green Belly Meal to Go Bars. This is the Mango Cashew Coconut. These things are delicious. Uh, I was really worried when, when I first got these. They're super heavy, and I was worried they were going to be really dry, and they're not. They're actually really, really good. They're they're about perfect, man. They're a little expensive, a little on the high side price-wise, but these things are great, and they become a staple. I will be bringing them pretty much on every trip, except the super ultralight ones. If I'm going super, super ultralight, it's going to be, you know, everything will be freeze-dried rather than these because these are bulky. They're heavy. Um, you know, it's five and a half ounces for, uh, it's two bars, so it's two bars. But this is like 10 bucks. It's like 10 bucks for two bars. So about $5 a bar. Um, but they're they're substantial and they taste really good. All of them, all the flavors uh, I've had all taste really good. So uh, to me, it's it's worth it.
today ended up being a lot longer than what we had planned it to be. Originally it was like 14.2. Had a couple side trips. Now I kept saying, I think flat bill. It was actually flat side pinnacle that we went up and that's where those amazing views were. It was beautiful up there. We met Kylie who uh, today was the two week mark of her through hike. And so she's probably got two to three more days and she'll be done, which is pretty cool. Um, but we were gonna stop at 14.2 at Nancy Shelter. Problem is, there was no water close to there. There's no water at the shelter. And it was 1.9 prior or a mile past uh, where there was actually water. So we decided to keep going. At first we were thinking we'd go to that creek that's a mile past, making it like a 15 mile day. Thing is, every every mile we do makes tomorrow on the way out shorter. And sometime overnight, storms are supposed to roll in. And so we'll be hiking out in the rain uh, in storms most likely tomorrow with you know later in the the morning into the afternoon the storms becoming severe storms so we wanted to see if we could make it a little bit further I know Chris was kind of not feeling great and he stopped at that creek that was uh, about a mile past the, the shelter so he still got about three miles from there to get here and I know he was he was dragging he was out out of uh, out of gas so and I told him hey if you need to stop, cook up your dinner. He has a dessert left. I said, do your dessert, do something. Uh, thing is, every time we stop, getting going again hurts. So I didn't want to stop, uh, but he, he'll make it, he'll make it, he'll be here. Uh, for the most part, today was a good, a good experience, a good hike. The last mile has kind of sucked. Once we crossed over and got into private property, it's maintained a little bit, but not as well. And uh, like right here is just kind of a, a weird crappy area. Although the the creek is right over there, uh, the access to it isn't great. And we're right here. There's a salt lick back here and there's a tree stand right over there. And this is definitely a hunter's area. And there's warnings in Gut Hook that, that this area, uh, this campsite in particular, <laughs> don't be here during hunting season because there will be hunters here. So that leaves us, I don't know, about eight, eight and a half for tomorrow to get out of here. We'll see. So this trip, one of the things that I've really been happy for uh, are my knees. So normally by day two, my knees are bothering me a little bit. You know, I've had problems with the knees for quite a while. And I started wearing some, some braces the problem with braces is you sweat underneath them. They move around. They kind of suck. Um, and these these pants, while they're stretchy, are kind of tight. So having something underneath there just doesn't work out very well. And it's hard to get to to adjust if they start slipping down. Um, so on the first day, we were coming down this one hill. And I I felt like the, the shock and the hyperextension on both knees uh, at one point. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, damn it. Chris, Rayman, he, he always runs these hills. And he's always like a mile ahead of me at the bottom of every hill because he runs them. And I was like, I've always been like, it's got to be harder on you. It's got to be harder on the knees. It's got to be harder. Um, but I decided on this trip just to, I had seen what, what, is, what the hell kind of bird is that? <laughs> so, so I'd seen him. Uh, doing this and so I decided I'm, I'm gonna run the run the hills too and amazingly it was so much less impact but my quads definitely burn more because you don't really it isn't like running where your your legs extended and stuff you're kind of you look really stupid while you're doing it because you're kind of bent over hunched forward a little bit using your trekking poles but you're you never straighten your legs out and you let your legs your your legs not the joints there's not bone to bone or anything slamming together uh, you let your legs kind of take the the shock and the impact and, and cushion it and dude four days four days of downhills well three days uh, three days at this point it'll be four days tomorrow um, and man I've had no issues with the knees at all knock on wood uh, but everything's been good and 
dude, now I'm faster. So that's that's good too. You watch that, the average speed, and it stays up because of that. I mean, we did 19 miles today. Average speed, let's see. Go back to tracking. Three miles an hour. Uh, three miles an hour over 19 miles is pretty damn good. So I'm gonna say it, it helps. It definitely helps. So we got Rayman over there hanging out in his his Darien. He picked a bad spot. <laughs> yeah, he did. It's uh it's a little warm today. It's in the 90s or not 90s. It's in the 80s. And uh he's in direct sun I'm, in a I'm baking. In a black hammock I'm in the sun. I'm over here. I've got a nice shady spot right now. Got the uh the tarp slung. He's gonna need to get his tarp slung because it's gonna rain on us, unfortunately. We've just been hanging out. There's a nice little uh, fire pit here, but it's, like I said, it's not the greatest area. Right over here, you can see that white thing. It's a uh, salt lick so that the hunters can train the deer, come over here and then shoot them. All right, so for dinner tonight, I've got two meals left and I'll probably eat both of them. It's, it's early enough, it's like five-ish, is it five? Yeah. Rayman's over there eating, so I want to eat too. So I've got two things to to decide from. Stopped today and did something we haven't done in a while. Well, I did something we haven't done in a while, and that's have lunch on the trail. Actually cooked up lunch. And I cooked up the Packet Gourmet Trailside uh, Bean and Cheese Burrito. Without a burrito, it just ate it out of, the, out of the bag. That stuff is delicious. It's really, really good. Um, the downside is uh, I ate that. I also ate some fruit. So I had about, uh, let's see, about 700 calories, 670 calories, I think is what it ended up being. And almost immediately after, well, along with that, I drank two bottles of water and immediately after eating, packed up my bag and started a, cl a two mile climb. Um, I wasn't feeling good. It wasn't a wise choice, but tonight I've got two choices. I've got the Packet Gourmet Pizza Margarita, and I have the Outdoor Pantry African Peanut Stew. Both awesome choices, but for whatever reason today, I was feeling, I was feeling like pizza. Uh, we were talking about different, different meals that we would like to have prepared and, and put into bags, and one of them I was thinking of was pizza, and then I was like, hey, I actually have that one. Um, so we're gonna start with that, see whether or not I can actually eat it. You know, it's kind of, a, we just checked, it's actually 87 degrees right now, real feels 89. It is baking in the sun right now. Um, and after pushing as hard as we did, as far as we did today, you know, we're not, we're not out here through hiking, we're not out here day after day. This is a, a, a four day stretch that we're doing straight from the couch. So uh, 19 miles was a, a day it was a long day so I'm gonna cook this up uh, great thing about a couple of the I think this is the third packet gourmet meal that I've had on this trip that requires very very little water so if you're doing a dry camp if like if we had stayed up at Nancy uh, Nancy shelter the problem with it was there was no water up there if you're doing a dry camp some of check out some of the packet gourmet stuff because this one only takes two and a half ounces of water the one I took I had earlier only called for two to three I believe and I think the one I did last night was four ounces so really low amounts of water and you get a good meal out of it so uh, something to think of if you're gonna be out somewhere where there's not a lot of water or you've got to carry all the water that you need so uh, think about that all right, so we've got some storms that'll be rolling in here tonight. And so I wanted to go like ultra super porch mode, this big palace, wake this or widen this thing out as far as possible. So this is my setup. <laughs> Look how wide this thing is. Got it pulled out to trees on a couple of corners. I've got trekking poles on the other corners. I've got the doors kind of pitched coming out. So, I mean, look at all the room inside of here. That is wide open and should be should be pretty good unless there's a, a super windy uh storm that rolls through but it shouldn't be all that windy i don't i'm hoping uh fingers crossed we'll see good morning Whew. 
it's Tuesday, so day 4.5, I guess we'll call it. If you count the uh, couple hours we hiked in Friday night, I think it was four and a half miles, so we'll count that as a half. We've got about eight miles, a little over eight miles out today, and uh, we're dodging storms. So we had a storm come through, woke me up right at 5.45, it was a short one. We rolled out, we were on the trail before, just before 6.30, and uh, trying to avoid getting drenched. So it looked like a, a pretty good window, maybe a couple of hours before anything was gonna move in. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be pressing our luck to try and make it to the, the cars before it opens up. Good night. Ended up waking up at midnight, pretty hungry, or not even waking up, I really was having trouble falling asleep. Um, you know, after a really long day, you're super exhausted, but sometimes it's just hard to fall asleep. So, oh man, that's beautiful down there. Nice big pool in the river. You're not gonna be able to see it really through the trees. Um, but it's got those greenish blues that we get here in, in Arkansas down in the, you might be able to just barely make it out down in there. You can see it's down there, but it's a pretty good size pool with a rock over the top of it that you could probably jump off of. Be kind of cool. So yeah, um, not that many miles out today. Couldn't sleep last night. So about midnight, I made second dinner. Had that uh, outdoor pantry African peanut stew. That was a good one. I like that one. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit smaller, but it was perfect. It was just enough. I was, I think that was part of the problem. Was I was having trouble falling asleep because I was hungry. So eating that kind of filled me up. Got a little bit of heat in my belly, and uh, yeah, I just kind of immediately fell asleep when I got back in the hammock. Then uh, rain woke me up at 5:45, so slept slept good not a ton of sleep but it was good sleep so this weekend now that we're finishing it up uh, we are done so we've just come down uh, really last night the last little downhill into camp uh, number one I had a little bit of a uh, casualty caught the tip of my pole in between two rocks and it snapped off uh, but these these are the tack niner poles that I've been using they've been working really really well uh, they've got probably approaching a thousand miles on them and and no big no big issues that's the first issue now the issue that Chris had that was one that was kind of a manufacturer thing this is totally user user caused uh, you know it got a jam I was doing that running down the hills got a jam between two trees it just kind of popped off um, but what I was what I was saying was this weekend's kind of created a little bit of a dilemma for rain man and I in that we knocked off 65 to 70 miles this weekend, uh, long weekend, four and a half days, but that leaves us only 20 miles to complete this entire trail. I don't think we had it in us to do 20 to 21 miles each day to knock it all out on this trip. Uh, yesterday's 19 and a half, 19.4 I think is what I've recorded. Um, that was enough to, to beat us down pretty good yesterday and wear us out. So I don't think we had 21s four consecutive days in us to, to knock out the rest of the trail. But it's over five hours to get here each way uh, for each of us. And so planning out to do a 20 mile section, especially a, a flat, easy section, I don't know how we're gonna, I don't know what the plan's gonna be there, but we do wanna finish this up and we wanna finish this up soon so we can say, hey, we've done all of the OT. Uh, at this point, we've done all of the hard parts of the OT. We just have a very, very flat section along, I think, a river between the lake that we're parked at and the end uh, down in Little Rock. So, nearing the end of this one.
still got about two miles to go just past the 200 mile marker that's a pretty big accomplishment uh means we've only got about 20 more 22 23 more of this trail left so <laughs> i want to show you kind of the aftermath of the last couple of days um just the salt build up all over so look at my pants look at all that salt all over my pants uh, and they're wet i mean they're wet from sweat uh, sorry they're wet from sweat all through here so when it dries it's going to be even worse like this area was all white last night kind of like you see right here uh all over so i probably could have washed it off in one of the creeks and uh probably would have been a smart thing to do the more of that you get on you especially if it's under straps if you build up bunch of salt salt is you know salt crystals um but when it crystallizes and it's underneath a strap you can get chafing issues so that's a good reason to rinse off your stuff uh wash it out once in a while every few days especially when it starts getting hot and you're sweating a lot and you're starting to see salt rings you know i see it on my hat all the time but when you start seeing it on your clothes it's wise to go ahead and rinse your clothes off as long as you can The trail has been quite a mess for the last mile. It's been very, very swampy. I mean, very swampy. All right, so we just finished up the trip. 65, 70 miles. We're just past mile marker 202 right here at Lake Mamel. And so we've got about 20 miles left to finish this entire trail. Uh, great trip really great trip glad, glad you guys were able to come along uh if you have any comments any suggestions leave them down in the comment section down below appreciate you guys checking this out appreciate you guys checking this out please hit that subscribe button when you do right next to it there'll be a little bell icon if you hit that you'll get notifications every time we upload a video man it was a beautiful weekend get yourself out on the trail i'll see you guys down the trail